have a yin or a yang hand issue, so you're going to push on it. You see, and then but he's doing a coquille projection. So that's a clash. And what always what I'm seeing as I'm watching you is your elbow collapses here. You see, and your so your elbow's here, and you did the yin hand, but you see how awkward this hand is. And some of you will try to keep pushing on it, but look how low his, his center is from what you did. You see? So stay there where you are. He's pretty squatty right now. In terms, not in terms of his head, but where is his center in relationship to his base of support? By, by the time this yin hand got there, he should be here. Do you see that? And so I would I want you to not watch the tesabaki, but watch what you're doing to his center. So he goes here, look how squatty he is. Do you see? And you're like mm. So part of your your young hand is actually he pushes is to get out of the way not to push him down into his base. You see? No. To let him pass you. To let him come off of his base. So let him come off of his base. So you have to have the yin yield, but your yin yield is going here. And it's mostly from him pushing your yang. So your body goes this way. And you start to move him this way. I'm going to ask you to uh, reference his shoulder. You see that? So not, not here. Reference his shoulder. See that his shoulder is traveling in space, which it's going to do when you go here. Do you see? It's just you're making sure that this hand is not keeping his shoulder there, but that it too is assisting that his shoulders move, you see? And that will stop his center, his center won't be squatty, you see? His, head, his spine is stilted, but his center barely moved because you kept it in place, so boom. Now you're going to pay attention to the yang shoulder. It keeps moving with the yin hand. And that happens because this hand first does the uh, outward spiral. Doesn't go straight in. There's a little then around. Just like this one actually goes first a little in, a little in, and then to the outward. Always a little yin and yang, a little yang and yin. Home. Never squatting him down on his set. Okay? Let's try it. Is there a point during the technique where the yin arm is no longer doing anything and then it's just all the yang arm? Okay, let me preface the answer with there's different levels. And that is necessary, okay? Um, we already know there's at a minimum three components to your training. So remember the, the model that we use here is expedited from all those, all, all that research and experience I've done. So for example, in other maps, they might go, there are three components, but the spiritual component actually has uh, 108 levels. You see, I was like, no, 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 what's the point of three then? Do you see? So I don't, I don't do that, okay? But 
Why did another culture go, there's 108? Because there's some utility to it, you see, for, for answers like this kind of stuff. So, um, but that doesn't mean you're ready for level 1-109 or 107, you see? So you stick where I have left most of you, work on that. There, there is just no way that you can do Kokudosa with squatting his uh, center of gravity. There's just, you're, there, you're, you'll be violating uh, either the energetic level or the spiritual level and obviously the physical level. So there, you, as much as you reconcile those three components, there's no way that you can do it by squatting his center of gravity. That, those are all, that's all wrong, okay? So the upaya that I gave you is to keep this yang shoulder moving, okay? The only way that yang shoulder will not move is when you are doing a yang yang clash. Then, then you're gonna hold, you're gonna hold that shoulder still, you see? And now as he pushes and as I push, it just squats him, squats me. And there's no way that's right, okay? But in answering this question, um, the yin hand is the aiki hand. And the aiki hand is going to adhere. You understand? So it's not, it's not that he pushes and I just yield. It's, there obviously is a yield in the way that aiki is not a yang and in the way that an aiki is not a contestation. But this push, this is a non-contestation too, but this is not aiki, okay? Just like he goes to grab, that's a non-contestation, but that's not aiki either. That's just getting out of the way, okay? Aiki is going to reconcile the yang value and the yin, the yin value so that we adhere we adhere, you see, there's a, there's a, a friction here. And it, it's not on any kind of hook or anything like that. You just match the yin value, which is ever changing as his body is falling and he responds to falling, all that matches. So at the end, when you, when you feel this, there's definitely, I'm not pulling, even though that's going in the same way that he's going, right? He's going that way and I pull him that way. That's still not Aiki. So as he comes around, you're gonna see what I do is I'm not cutting out here if you pay attention. I just kind of lay on top here and I don't, I neither push nor pull, I neither lift nor press. And then I stu I'm stuck on him, do you see? So I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna take the rest of you back to that shoulder and then you can look for this, this hand. So he, he's trying a coq projection, I'm not yield, and I'm here just resting, okay? And you can pick him up, <laughs> do things, this is as you have it. The eye adhesion is also in, in where he's touching. So as I'm here, I'm not stressing his grip, but it's in here. I've matched that yin yang value and that creates that adhesion, that adhesion. So a lot of times, depending on what they do, I can't get to here. You see? But I, I, he's touching me here. So that's what I adhere to, that part. That's what I got on top. But I'm not pressing down. That time my arm did it. 
And that time my arm got over the top. You see? And that's where the adhesion is. Here. So you have to resist uh, the throwing of him. As you said initially, you get greedy and you're like, oh yeah, I got him. You have to resist that and you're just doing the relationship. So you do have a physical component and I've asked you there, but you also have this energetic component. And when I do the energetic component, Although the IP adhesion is happening out here, the source of it is in my body. So his yang energy is going to go into my body and I'm gonna rotate it with the yin energy coming from the ground. And that, what I let back out is equal to whatever is on this hand. So in my mind, when I'm practicing, I don't do uh, the throw. I am just doing this fixing of those two energies. And then one hand has the projection, and one hand has the adhesion. So if you, if you, what I would look for, since this one felt greedy, remember you mentioned that, you won't see my deltoid or my ball and socket joint being utilized. It won't pull, okay? And the other thing you can look for is how relaxed the, ha the, the hands actually are. Because it's all in here. Right. So, um, I did, I, I may have used the word relax. At the end, like notice how relaxed the arms are. And then, and you know, I guess what I'm trying to say there is notice that I'm getting the effect without the, uh, the muscular uh, utilization of the arms. And hence, the effect is energetic, okay? But the word relax is misleading because then we go like, and that's not it, okay? Um, I, the, the cycling energy is what's holding the integrity of the, of the shape, okay? Not, not this, all right? Um, the, the orientation of that cycling energy is what does the throw. It's, it's, I, I understand at one level there's a push-pull, uh, you know, kind of anatomical displacement of his line of gravity outside his base of support, but uh, you have to move past that. Um, so, the First thing before we get to the answer to your question, if it's not relaxed, what is it? Is let's stay still uh, physical. And let's note that uh, Suwari Waza is training that isolates out the midfoot point on the bottom of your foot and zeroes in on the quad. Okay? So you don't want to uh, stay here. There's going to be movement in the quad. Okay, let's, 
Some of us, uh, let's just, that's all you're going to do. So I want you to, again, I'm giving you a reference point. Uh, just like that's not Kokudosa, but that's my reference point in whether I had a yang yang clash or not. Did the shoulder keep moving diagonally forward into the angle of disturbance? Okay, so my reference point here is the seams between my legs and my pelvis. I don't want them to stay here in Seiza. They will move open and close, okay? So as I'm going to this way, they, again, because there's yang and yin, they're gonna open and close one way and then open and close the other way, okay? So if I would like for you to look at the seams, that forget him, forget my handwork, okay? So you're gonna see that if I throw that way first, first they go this way, and then they go that way, okay? So you're, you're looking for that, boom, pop. I'm consciously uh, working that. That's the whole point of Suwari Vasa. Okay. At, if you're if you got that down, then what I want you to do is take the tanden, and the tanden is where it's it's not a place where the heaven chi and the earth chi meet. Where they meet is the tanden, okay? So you're going to uh, start to move that tanden and it is going to, that energy is going to go out first with the qua. So it's gonna rotate this way. It's gonna rotate up. That's what gets his center up. It's gonna rotate back the other way, and then down, rotate forward, okay? So I'm doing, as I'm doing the technique and he's pushing, I'm going, it's gonna rotate out, it's gonna rotate up, it's gonna rotate in, and then rotate down, that energy. So home. You, there's no way you can do that without moving the claw, but, and so you can't inverse it. First move your qua, then, then move your energy. The same way, there's no way you can reconcile the yang yang clash without that shoulder coming forward, okay? But it doesn't mean you're doing everything, but that has to be there. So as I'm doing the technique, I, the, those three or four of you in the dojo, you're gonna work on feeling those yin and yang chi, and you're gonna rotate it. That's what's rotating, okay? For others, you're going to actually work the seams of your legs. You're not going to stay still and do the technique. The seams move. anymore. You just go. So I showed those two things because uh, to answer the question, is it is it relaxing? No, no it's not. I, I'm doing that same thing. That chi is just circulating. Again, people will go like, well, you're at an angle and they can't. Yes, they, they freaking can. So I'll take it into my shoulders and you're going to see now. can push at any angle they want and push. They're going to push if I'm not doing this. So these energies are circulating in me, allows my arms to be not using tension to hold the spot, but release. And then I rotate the So when we go standing, now I've 
drop back to midfoot. And he will have a lot more power because he can have his legs in there. Okay? So, our, our next drill is don't move your feet. Home. You're going to have to do everything we just did. The quad still has to function. For those that can, your chi is still rotating, turning, and then spinning down. So now you need to have that rooting. You need to have the rooting skill through the midfoot point. Okay. So again, what we're, what we're demonstrating, he's pushing, is that I can root. That's all we're demonstrating. So when I when I go on one leg, it's not that uh, I'm trying to not hold him still or or whatever. I'm trying. I would never do a technique like this. But this demonstrates the rooting skill. That's all that demonstrates. So when I do my throw. I'm not using momentum and getting out of the way. This yang energy comes into my body. The rooting skill is the earth chi, the yin chi. That's going to now come up my body and they circulate in my tanden. And that is what makes Aikido. So that's all I'm doing again. That, that's all I'm doing again. Whoa, hop. Moving. Circulating. Circulating. And at the end, it has to circulate down in the drill. It doesn't go up. Circulates down. 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 Not down here. Down here. Okay, try it again. But this time I'll move the the uh, tanden all in place. I don't have to go external circle. Nor do I have to have my uke turn himself. This turns, turns him.
Okay, I will exaggerate the claw movement going back a few steps. So to have the left hand be the yin hand, okay, the claw goes this way, which means the yang and yin chi are going to turn this way. So it turns, then it's going to go back, okay? So I, it's going to come up, up. That's where he gets the lift, you see? And now it's going to turn this way, this way. And then it's going to turn down. So it's going to go out, up, in, down. Out, or to my right, up, in, down. That's how you get it. This is going to be the yin hand. And that's how you're doing it here. Out, up, in, down. Right, I'm not here. There's no movement, you see. I move my body externally. Or he comes forward and turns himself around. That's bullshit. I'm going to move, I'm going to move him, oh, I'm going to move him, I'm moving him over there, I'm moving him up, I'm going to move him in, you see, I'm going to move him down, I'm doing, I do it all inside, okay, try it again.